Welcome back to The Mix. Our guest tonight is an actor that is truly a star on the rise. He is co-starring on BMF, the hottest new show on cable television, playing the legendary Terry Flannery, who was one of the leaders of the infamous Black Mafia family that ran the drug scene from Detroit to Atlanta and LA to who knows where else in this world. So let's welcome Da Vinci into the mix. Yeah. Hey, Da Vinci. What's going on? What up, what up, what up? Okay. What up, though? Before... I should say. I should... Hey, what up, though? What up, though? What up? But right. before we get started, it's Thanksgiving week, so we have to ask you, what's your favorite side dish? And yes, there is a wrong answer, so I'm just going to put that out there. <laughs> favorite side dish? I mean... I'm I'm Haitian, so it's a little it's a little different. Um, okay, let us in. Let but us in. basically, probably like I don't know, baked macaroni. Okay, okay. You know what I'm saying? I like that. Yeah. Very solid. Yeah, mac, oh. mac and cheese. Baked I ain't gonna say collard greens. Oh. <laughs> That's a good one. Okay. Mm-hmm. So we all hot sauce. some of our favorite traditions. Do you have any like favorite Thanksgiving or holiday traditions? Nah, I I I I ain't grow up, like I'm I'm my fault. I'm probably like a I'm I'm lame when it comes to that because I ain't grow up that big with like you know the American holidays and traditions and stuff like that. I mean January first, every January first we have like a huge uh, Independence Day party because that's where the Haitians gain their independence and you know them being the first slaves to take their independence from the white man. That's like a a big thing. So it's like this big soup jumu thing and, and all that stuff that that we do. I used to think we were celebrating New Year's, but when I got older, I was like, oh, it was our independence that we celebrated. So mm, nice. We respect the culture. Yeah, it's amazing. That's what we like on the mix. You know, everybody bring what you bring to the table. That's why it's called a mix. We like gumbo, baby. I'm just saying. Right, right. Right. <laughs> okay, well, I'm gonna get right into it. BMF is one of the hottest shows right now. And the season finale was just on on Sunday. So can you tell us how you landed this project and what you knew about Black Mafia family coming into the series? So I ain't I ain't know much about BMF. Like I, I heard references in like rap music, like in songs, you know what I'm saying? Everybody shouting big me child or BMF, something like that. But like to me, they was like Bigfoot, you know what I'm saying? They were just like hood legends that it was like, all right, whatever, it's cool. And growing up in, in New York and New Jersey, like we ain't really I mean, I heard of them, and I was like a kid too, so I ain't really, you know. But but when I heard about this project, I was like, oh, I rock with this, and I like this character Terry because I had mad similarities with him. I like the storyline; it was based on a true story. I was like, damn, you know, I could get my Frank Lucas, Denzel Washington, American Gangster on right now. So I was like, you know what, bet, let me do this, and they had me go out for B. Mickey and Terry. Mm-hmm. And um, so they wanted me to test for Terry and not be Mickey. And I was like, all right, boom, let me do it. And it was one audition and I tested and I got the project. And wow. That's the history. Okay. Well, speaking on that, man, I'm happy you didn't know who BMF was when you was three years old, my brother. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> it better be like Bigfoot. But now, <laughs> but now you, had a, you had a couple of great roles and I'm sure there are many more to come. But since you're a first generation Haitian American, how much does your success mean to your family? Because I know that's big. Facts, facts. Yeah, it's 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 huge, man. You know, like they they look at me like I led the Haitian Revolution now. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? But 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 it, it, it's dope to, you know, have you know so many people look up to you and just be like, yo, like he comes from our background and, and he made it out, you know what I'm saying? So it's it's dope. It's a lot of pressure though, because I'm like you know now, but like damn, like you know I'm I'm a lot of people, you know I'm I'm looking out for a lot of people, and a lot of people is looking up to me. So now I'm like, damn, like I'm in that position to where it's like now I'm a I'm I'm a leader for a lot of people, even though I didn't like ask for this position and kind of just you know fell on me. So it's like it's it's a lot of pressure, but it's a blessing at the same time. But look, man, it, you know why it fell on you, right? Because you could handle it. You're one of the few in this mm. industry. I told people years ago when I seen you on All American and other stuff, I said, this dude got a light. And you really do. You shine bright, mm. you know, and that's why God going to just give you a lot because you can handle it, man. And you got big shoulders, dog. I'm just saying. Mm. So you're going to hold it I up. I appreciate it. This is the beginning. You're one of those actors where I know every actor, they're like, 
when you go out for a role, it's like, okay, if that person got the role other than me, I know the movie and TV showing is in good hands. And you're one of those guys for real. Damn. Yeah. I really appreciate that, bro. Like for real, for real. Cause I, I grew up looking up to you. So you saying that man, like for real, that, that really like that, that hit. Man. Hey, that. Inside edition is full circle. So don't be hating full circle. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> well, Da Vinci on BMF, uh, you're co-starring alongside the real big Meech's son, Lil Meech. How dope is it to have someone directly connected to the story be in the series with you? It's, it's, it's dope because it, it it helps make it just authentic and just that much more real, you know what I'm saying? And and, and Lil Meech became my personal Google, you know what I'm saying? Like, I was like, I hit him like, yo, bro, like, what, what's this right here? Like, is this for real? Is this not? Is this whatever, whatever? Mm-hmm. And he'll look to me for advice because I've been doing it, like, I've been in the game for, like, what, four or five years? And he just started, so it's like, we'll, like, go off each other. Like, he'll give me the facts and I'll help him out with some stuff. So it was like a perfect chemistry balance that, that we had that, you know, I think um, allowed us to really just deliver the job. You know, you can see that balance in that chemistry, like watching you guys, that you guys actually rock with each other and you guys are actually mm-hmm. fond of each other. Like there is a beautiful chemistry when watching the show. And I think everybody who watches the show loves that chemistry and that's why they're tuning in so much because you guys are doing such a beautiful job. I appreciate that. Absolutely. Now, BMF's reign was going on through de- three decades. And if you know their history, you know they ended up touching plenty of other cities outside of Detroit. So, Da Vinci, how many seasons do you think you'll need to tell the complete story? I think hopefully six. I think six. Period. And we're ready. I think, I, I think, I think six seasons. Six seasons strong and it will be. We'll be good, and then I'll, I'll get in the Marvel universe. <laughs> Let me stop. Okay. No, no, no. no we, we, we manifest it. We manifest on this show. Hey. Hey, before the Marvel universe, we about to bring him to the Master P biopic, too. You know, I'm recruiting right now. Oh, oh, please. Oh, okay. please, please. Romeo, do that. Please do that. hold up now. You know I'm a jealous person. And no, I got no. Romeo you has been recruiting. Every oh oh damn it. Don't play my mom. Yeah, I I need I'm, you oh, she's oh, quiet. I'm quiet. <laughs> <laughs> she said I'm quiet. He's been recruiting all the guests, and I'm just like, dang, like you know, do Romeo not see my potential? But go ahead. I got <laughs> you. Know, I'm taking notes, baby. <laughs> right. But no, I could see you as a superhero, bro. I think you will be one of the next big superheroes as well. No, I appreciate For that. For sure. Man. I appreciate hey. that. Well, one thing we all know is that this show is a certified hit and you know how i know because it already got renewed for a second season after the first episode premiere that's crazy man that is huge so how did that make you feel like learning that news da vinci but like you know what i'm saying we we did the job you know whenever you i feel like every day on set for like six five six months we were shooting i feel like you know what I'm saying? We, we was like a, a, a team, a basketball team, and it was just, we were struggling some days. Some days was hard. Some days I wanted to punch the coach in the face. You know what I'm saying? Some <laughs> days I understand what the coach was saying, but, you know, when that finished product came out in that first episode, you know what I'm saying? We got that season two. I was like, damn, this is like, this is like a little ring, you know? It's like, mm-hmm. nah, well, the Emmy is the ring, but this is kind of <laughs> like a, we made it to the, you know, semifinal finals. And I was like, oh, this is dope. This is dope. Our hard work is paying off, so. Definitely paid off, man. It's huge. huge. And listen, we all know 50 Cent is executive producing the project, but I heard that you were a huge 50 fan before this. So were you nervous when you first met him? And like, how do you feel working with him now? Yeah, I'm definitely a huge 50 fan. Still am, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, it, it was, it, it was crazy when I, like, Everything that's happening right now, I, I legit like wrote it down. So it was kind of like, I was like, damn, again? I was like, damn, this is wild, you know? And just sitting with 50, just chopping up with him and, and you know, seeing how much of a, you know, he's, he's a funny dude. He's a good dude. He got a, he got a good heart. You know what I'm saying? Just don't push him. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Uh, uh, yeah, he was dropping mad jewels to me and me. So he's, I was like, it's like sometime I was like, damn, I got to pinch myself. Like, is this real, you know? Like, I was like, I remember when we were flying to Detroit to shoot and we were all on a plane together. And I was just like listening to Hate It or Love It as he's sitting right there next to me. I'm like, oh, this is crazy. Like, you know, but 
It, it was amazing, man. Like dreams really come true. I feel like I'm in a little. I feel like I'm in a Disney story right now, like and shit. Like I'm Princess and the Frog or some shit like that. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> I'm crying. Man, well, you also have some big time artists and actors making appearances on the show, like Snoop, who's playing the Reverend, and Detroit's own Mr. Eminem. He made yeah. an appearance on the show as well. So, what can you tell us about working with these legends in the game, and and what advice did they give you? Yo, Snoop, Snoop, man, that like. I, I, I'm a huge fan of Snoop, but now it's like, I, I love that man even 10 times more after meeting him. He's so damn humble. Like, you would think he's not Snoop Dogg. Yeah. Like, he, he like, the jewels that he was dropping and, and, and like, he was just telling me how, I remember he was talking to me and Meech one day because we had a hell of a long ass day, <laughs> days on set. Let me see what I could share on camera um he was just telling me like yo be, be be careful who you meet like be careful how you talk to people and how you treat people because everyone on this set like you never know who they're gonna be tomorrow he's like he done seen people rise from like pawns to kings like overnight and and he's just he, he basically was just telling telling me like yo what what kept him you know afloat all these years like he never tried to bully niggas he never he, he didn't have that he he moved with love like he moved with love with like everything he did it with straight love and, and, and respect and you know and I, I think that's why his longevity is like like yep. this like it, it's wild yeah. but every day like being on set shooting with him for like a minute like it, it was so dope like we, we played spades he was on the same team a few times i made him lose the game but it's cool <laughs> but uh but yeah no nah, he, he's a cool cat eminem i ain't really when eminem came on i was going home because i was like i was off i was like damn i'm done my scene i'm out so I was like, boom, okay. I disappeared. But Eminem wasn't trying to like even like talk to anyone. Like he was like one of his, you know what I'm saying, Eminem joint. So he just he zoned out and then just did his thing. So I saw him, but I didn't really I didn't speak to him. Mm. And okay. we can't let you wait. We got to talk about Snoop some more because I don't feel Snoop get his roses. That's one of the people in the industry where I really look, I look up to because I seen his growth. You know, even when my dad signed him as a youngin and moved him to Louisiana. Snoop was the biggest artist and always the most appreciative. He was the one in the label where he didn't, he never depended on my dad, but he looked up to my dad for advice and applied it to his own life. So I want to give my roses to Snoop because I think he's somebody in his industry who really don't get the roses he deserved because he's so humble. But Snoop is a mega star and uh, shout right. out to Uncle Snoop. That's why everybody call him Uncle because he really feel like right. yeah. yeah, nah, for real, for real, facts, facts like that. That dude like. When I met him, like he made it seem like like I was really his nephew. Like it, it was just it was crazy. But I, I I met him before, and me and his son Cordell, we cool. So you know what I'm saying. But but he like he man, that dude got a beautiful spirit, man. He's like one of the dopest humans. Like honestly, legit, he's the dopest person I met in the business. Yeah. Like like oh like like OG veteran. Like for him to be like that, like I'm like damn, this is crazy. Well, Anton, didn't your I don't, mom? I don't know what type of weed he smoked, but. <laughs> <laughs> she sure does. Let me tell you, I took I took my mom to go see Snoop play Redemption of a Dog in Detroit. We went back and met him. My mom ended up smoking weed with him, man. He fell in love with my mama. He was like, Don't be mad at me because your mama look good. She <laughs> yeah, hey, that's what's a- the next question, Todd? Too Don't good. get mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I actually um I want to know, did you get a chance to meet? the real Terry Southwest T. Flinnery and get like some game from him about um, how it was back in the day. Yeah, I I did. I was actually just with him like a week and a half ago. So I flew to Detroit. I did a meeting meet and greet and I I popped up in this club and we were just having an off the record conversation. And you know what I'm saying? He was, he was really dropping jewels to me and and he really um, expressed his appreciation for me playing his character. And we really got to know each other on a deep level, like behind the scenes. Because, you know, in camera, on camera, there's only certain things you can say, certain things you can't say. So we really just got to chop it up. And um, what I what I will say is that, like, like it, it, it's, it's mad divine how I'm playing it. Like, it, it's crazy. Like, our similarities, it, it's it's so, it, it's wild. And um, he, uh, he he's, he's excited with the work. Like, he's, he's real happy. And... Um, well, yeah, I, hate, I, I hate to have to cut you off, but we do have yeah. to go to break. But don't worry, we're coming right back to talk about your Broadway show right here on Fox Soul. 
Welcome back to The Mix. We're here with Da Vinci from the hit series, BMF on Stars. So you have so many great projects under your belt, and one of those is an amazing Broadway show you're currently starring in called Thoughts of a Colored Man. Now, I just want to say, guys, I got to go to the opening night of this show, and it was phenomenal. Da Vinci, I told you you were extremely great in it. But please tell us what this play is about and tell us about your character. So the play is about, it's about seven black men and we're seven different emotions, but we're really like just one person. Just And, and it's about the, the experience of a colored man basically in this country. So um, it is just, it, it touches on a lot of different things that, you know what I'm saying? Even if you're white, you're still going to relate to it. You, you don't got to be black. Any any ethnicity, you're going to relate to it. And it, it has some good food for thought in there. And it's like the first time, I don't want to ruin it and say anything. It's one of those things you just got to go to. You got to experience it. And, you know, it, it, it it's, it's going to stir up some conversations. And it's actually the first time ever in the history of Broadway that there's ever been an all-Black cast a black director and a black writer. So, and it's making history. So wow. it's, 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 it's hitting Broadway from a different perspective. And it can't, and it's, it's wild to think that we in 2021 and it's the first time something like this ever happened, you know? Yeah. Okay. For sure. So let me ask you this, how different is acting on camera versus on stage? Woo! Very different. <laughs> very, very, very different. I feel like on stage, you like in Looney Tunes, you know, it's like, <laughs> It's like everything that won't everything that won't get you the job on TV and film is what you do on Broadway. <laughs> like it makes no sense. It's like it, it's like its own little world, but it's uh it's one of those things that I think every young actor should should not even any and you don't even gotta be young. Every actor, if you've never done it before, you definitely should do it because that's where it originally began. You know what I'm saying? That's where I feel like you'll get your OG stripes when you do Broadway. Like I had no clue what I was going into. And now I'm like, damn, this is a lot of work. Like eight shows a week. Yeah. This is this is next level. Like dealing with people, like and you experiencing the feeling at the same time as the audience is. Like a TV and film, you shoot it, it come out six months later, a year later, you forgot about it. So when people talk about it, like, oh, wow, well, it was so great when you did X, Y, Z. You're like, huh? But like in Broadway, it's like right there. Like when you leave that shit, like they crying, you crying with them. <laughs> it's yep. like, it's like it, it, it's dope. It's a dope experience, but it's a lot of work. The thing about work. theater that people shows don't like that. Up. I got to jump in real quick. Doing shows like that as an actor, I think it prepares you even more, though, because if you could go do Broadway and plays, Jamie, I know you just asked that question. You could go make a movie. I feel like it's no pressure. Right. Like this is a whole nother level of when I make a mistake, I got to make it a human moment, you know, because on Broadway, it's no such thing as a mistake. If you fall, you got to get right back up. Mm-hmm. You know, right. filming a show, you fall or do the wrong thing, you could cut next one. But uh, man, that's crazy you're doing that. And it shows, man, you are the real deal. We got to re- watch when he come on this show next season. I'm just saying, next Denzel or something. <laughs> <laughs> and the real deal, it, bro. Real. Can you share it. with us uh, your emotion that you play in the play? So I, I, I played the emotion of lust. So lust is, you know, he's a young cat. He's probably like 19, 20. And he just, he lived for the flesh. He's, he's the typical dude, like, that everyone know. Like, the most basic dude that everyone know. I mean, it, it's, he's after girls, money, and the flashy things in life. You know what I'm saying? But, but everybody like that have a beginning. And, and when you hear his story, in his beginning, you'll understand why he's the way he is. You know what I'm saying? So it's uh first I was like, you know, hesitant on playing that character. I was like, eh, I ain't trying to play this dumbass nigga. But then it's like, <laughs> but 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 like the story in itself, like like the whole story it has a powerful message. I was like, you know what? Let me quiet my ego and let me serve the character. Cause you know, you know, as an actor, you know, you're not supposed to judge the character you play, because you know, the, the the meaning of the entire story is so powerful that I had to really just tell my ego, relax. I serve this character like it has nothing to do with me let me serve it and let me do it to the best of my ability and you know it's it's moving a lot of people okay so i'm just gonna take the time to make this a little more personal and say since you do play an emotion if you had to choose one emotion to describe yourself what would passion 
Ooh. Oh, passionate. so you passionate. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Sure. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. Okay, we hear it. You was ready with that answer. Somebody okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But let me just say, I like how quickly we answer that because that's perfect right. for the game that we're about to play. Okay, okay. So let me just say this. Before you go, we do want to have some fun with you with a game we like to call the Mix Minute. Hey. Yeah. What is it called? <laughs> the graphic. It's called the okay. Mix Minute. The mix so oh, here, be fair. Right. Here's how it works. We're going to ask you some rapid fire questions and you answer as many as you can until we run out of time. But the number one rule is please don't think too hard. The first thing that comes to mind, say it, we'll work with it, and let's have a great time. Yeah, I'll probably get canceled because the first thing that <laughs> no, comes to my mind, like, <laughs> All right, I so should be like, D, don't do the first thing. Do the thing after. <laughs> yeah, let's go with the second. Like, like, my, no, we my want that first. We want that first. We hear the big of his career on the mix. Anton, not okay. canceled. Okay. He ain't going to get canceled. He's fresh off the okay. like, we don't, we don't okay. well, This is the first one. What TV we show or movie great. will you always stop and watch if it's on? Uh, like, <laughs> Lion King. The Lion King, yeah. Okay. 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 Me too. Right. Not me too. Okay. So, who is your dream? What I'm doing. Huh? <laughs> who is your dream actor or actress to work with? Ooh. It Mixed changed. Minute, it changed. Uh, Denzel Idris Elba. Okay. Okay. Well, okay. Right. Who was your teenage celebrity crush? Teenage celebrity crush. Um. Tan, you may want to give him the pep talk I, before you I, used, I used to, I used to like, oh, damn, I work with her now. Fuck. Uh, that's not good. Oh, no. Uh, Tom, what the mix does? We make stuff nah. We make dreams. We make dreams. Uh, Beyonce, true, Beyonce. Beyonce. Oh, wait, no. Ooh. We can't make well, that one. We can't make no, that come no. true. We, I'm sorry. She's, she's or, taking. Or Rihanna. Like, Beyonce, Rihanna, or... Okay, Rihanna's relationship is pretty new, so... That I love Ciara, I love Nunu, I love Lala. You yeah. want the married girl, we trying to make something... No, 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 I'm saying when I was a kid, when I was a teenager. Uh, okay. Lala is single, Lala is single. Not Lala. I know, but I work with Lala. You work with Lala. Hey, they say you work together... He's talking about his teenage crush, y'all. Yeah, but I'm All a right, teenager, like, I'm thinking about... Yeah, thank you, thank you. Sorry, yeah, let's, you. Got let, you, let us not get off. Damn. Right. All right, Romeo, hit him with the next one. All right, if you could only listen to one song for the rest of your life, what would it be? Mm, uh, Pound Cake Drake. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Love that. Okay, so we're going to get real personal. Don't kill me. But we just did this with one of your co-stars, Miles, and it was so much fun. So I just have to ask you, what's your relationship status? Are you single in relationship or is it complicated? Um, I'm, 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 I'm in the streets. Now I'm playing. <laughs> 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 I'm joking. For I'm the joking. I'm joking. He's I'm for joking. the streets. No, I'm, I'm lying. I'm lying. No, I'm, I'm chilling. I'm, I'm single right now. I'm, I'm actually just too busy to even get in a relationship. No girl is going to want me because of my schedule right now. They're going to act like they cool in the beginning and then start throwing a fit. Yeah. I used to okay. say that back in the day. It's Romeo. <laughs> it's Romeo. They right. don't want you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> hey, but look, can I tell y'all something right quick? I feel there's not too many leading men out there. I feel he gonna be the next Denzel when we we fast forward to a few years, and I'm gonna be like on that Will Smith. So I'm just saying, remember you heard it first, Denzel and Will Smith of the new era, right here on Facts. the. Facts. That's all Yo. I'm saying. Facts. Hey, Facts. Facts. Let's do it. Minus the baggage, it, you know. You know. I'm I, love, I love. <laughs> I love all the manifestations. And the entanglements. Okay. Right. There's a lot of entanglements going on right now, brother. You might not want to put that on your life. I'm <laughs> We manifest. We make dreams happen here on the mix. But unfortunately, that is all the time we have for Mix Minute. Da Vinci, that wasn't too bad, right? We didn't go too hard. No, that was good. I'm happy I stopped with the personal questions, though. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm, I'm, I'm an open book. I'm an open book. I don't care. Y'all got to Okay. We do have to take a quick break, but huge thank you to Vinci for getting into the mix with us tonight. And if you need to catch up on BMF, head to the Stars app, and you definitely should. And they've got you covered with all of season one. You can also watch them on All American on the CW and Netflix. And if you're in New York City, go check them out live on Broadway in the show Thoughts of a Colored Man. 
Don't go anywhere because Zonique was recently a hot topic on the Wendy Williams show and she's going to respond when we come back. So keep it locked right here on Fox Soul.